Hello differential equation students. So in this video, we'll see how do we solve uh, some of the nonlinear differential equations. In general, solving nonlinear differential equations is relatively a little bit complicated and challenging than solving linear differential equations. So we're going to take a look at some basic methods, some few methods that are useful in terms of solving nonlinear differential equations. We all know the definition of nonlinear differential equations. It's basically when you have a function, you know, y of x, and, uh, and you have a differential equation involving uh, the derivative, right, the derivatives of that. And now what do you have when we say nonlinear differential equation, by which we mean is that uh, the, uh, <coughs> the powers of the de uh, dependent variable or the derivatives, right, is not one, right? Is not one, or is not multiplied by itself? Then we say it's a nonlinear differential equation. So here's an example of a nonlinear differential equations. So let's see how do we solve this one. So this one, if you really pay close attention to this one, again as I said, there is not really a single method. But if you pay close attention to this one, you see that I have y double prime and I have y prime, and this one is missing the uh, y. So therefore, what we can do, we can do some sort of a substitution. Using this substitution, we can reduce from second order to the first order, and hopefully, we can use the methods that we used to use, uh, you know, before in solving this. That is the idea behind this one. This is basically uh, it's a reduction of order. This is basically reduction of order by substitution. So let's quickly solve that. So this reduction of order. And what we are going to do in this one is that, as I said, I'm going to set u is equal to y prime, and then u prime would be y double prime, right? Here we say u is a function of uh, x, right? u is a function of x, which is the y prime of x. So when we say u prime, that means the derivative of u with respect to x. That means it's the derivative of y with y prime with respect to x, which is the y double prime. Now, if I plug in this information back into this differential equation, you would see that this is going to be transformed into the following, which is um, u prime is equal to 4 times x times u squared, right? Now, this is a first order differential equation. That's the reduction of order order step. And then let's see how do we solve it. Because I think by looking at this, by st if I stare at this equation long enough, you will realize that I can use the var separ variable separable method. So if I do that, let me plug in, let me group all the y's on one side and all the x on the other side. So before I do that, let me just uh, rewrite the u prime as a du over dx and equals 4x x is over u squared. Now if I simplify this, you would agree with me that I am going to have uh, 1 over u squared times du is equal to 4x dx. And now that's a variable separable. So if I integrate both sides, as you would see here, uh, if I integrate both sides as my x tab, this would be u to the negative 1. And this would be x squared plus c. And uh, there's negative in here. And if I simplify this, ladies and gentlemen, you would agree that I am going to have uh, 1 over u, or in other words, u is equal to negative 1 over x squared plus c. And uh, given uh, initial condition, then you should be able to figure that C out. But we are not done though. We only solve for U. We still need to solve for the Y. So how do you do that? And if you do that, then you know this is your Y prime. Let me use a different color. That's your Y prime, which is equal to negative 1 over X squared plus C. I think rather than C, what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, uh, let me change this to c1 and c1. Let me call this as c squared. So to my to make my life easy, right? So then uh, this looks like a more of a um, if I integrate this, I can I can get you know tan inverse. So therefore, if I integrate this to get the y, then the solution y is going to be uh, tan inverse or rather negative one over c tan inverse x over c and then you're going to have another constant so let me call that as a c2 right so that will be the solution to this particular nonlinear second order uh, this particular nonlinear second order or second order nonlinear differential equation 
again we use the reduction of order method this is not going to work every single time this is going to only work when you when one of the function or the derivative is missing so all we, what we have here is two successive uh, derivatives that's all we have so then we can use a substitution and then solve that uh, the second st the second type of another simpler method is what we call you know if one of the variable or if the dependent variable is missing so if the differential equation does not have any dependent variable then uh, we can um, solve that in a nicer way let's take a look at how do we do that so here what we're going through the next one is what happens if one of the independent variables is missing the next step is if the, in, if the independent variable is missing what we can do right if the independent variable is missing right so <clears throat> so basically uh, the differential equation that you have is going to look like something like this is a function of or uh, something like you know uh, a dependent variable or the derivative including the second derivative there is no uh, explicit um, expression of x in there let me give you an example so for example uh, something like this so how do you solve a problem like you know y times the y double prime is equal to y prime squared right how do you solve that <clears throat> so let's take a look so in this case also we're going to do the substitution but the substitution is the same as we had earlier but the uh, same as we had earlier it's the same substitution that we're going to use but uh, the conceptually this is going to be a little bit different right so here i'm going to let here also i'm going to let y is equal to or u is equal to y prime right here um, we are going to say u is a function of y right which in this case happens to be y prime right otherwise u is a function of y is yes. dy this is going to be uh, dy over dx and so therefore if we ask what is the y double prime right we know that the y double prime is uh, uh, we know that the y double prime is uh, d in this case right this is the y double prime so this is basically if you take a look at this right y prime is equal to u therefore y double prime which is equal to d y prime over dx which in this case would be d u over dx since we said u is a function of y, u is a function of y right so what we have here is u is a function of y and y is a function of x so therefore the du over dx would be du over dy times dy over dx it's going to be du over dy times dy over dx right so that's what we're going to use so we're going to rewrite this into du over dy times dy uh, over dx by the chain rule and du over dy we're going to leave as is right so du over dy is we're going to leave as is but this dy over dx, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly same as uh, this, which is the y prime, which is equal to u. So this would be u times du over dy. And we are hoping, if I plug this in, if I plug all these information, if I plug this information and this information, uh, both of them into this, right? Hopefully, I should be, um, uh, hopefully I will have an equation where I can use reduction of order or some other or not reduction of order or maybe variable separable things along that line where I can work with them, uh, I can solve it. That is the idea behind that, right? So here the idea is we are going to say u as a function of y is, is the y prime and then we're going to apply the chain rule on here. Let me show you how it's done using this particular uh, example. So in this case, right, as I said, that's what you're going to use. So step number one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the substitution, which is u is equal to y prime. As I said, then y double prime happens to be u times du over dy. And the second step is, we are going to plug this information. If I plug this information, what I am going to have is y times y double prime, which is u times du over dy is equal to u prime squared, which is uh, y prime squared, which is u squared. Again, remember, here we are treating u as a function of y, not as a function of x anymore, right? So here the variables are u and y. Uh, u is a dependent variable and y is the independent variable in this particular case. 
So this is the dependent variable and this is the independent variable in this particular case. So now I can use in this case variable separable method. If you apply the variable separable method, you're going to see that I'm going to have, you know, uh, u du over u squared equals um, <clears throat> 1 over y dy. And if I integrate this, ladies and gentlemen, you would agree with me that I am going to have, that I am going to have, uh, uh, actually I can cancel this, so it's going to be ln of u is equal to ln of y. I'm going to say plus ln of c. Oh, you can have the absolute value, absolute value in here. That tells you, that tells you your u as a function of x is going to be c times uh, y, right? Um, if you want to say, let's call it as a c1y, <clears throat> right? Now again, our goal is to find the uh, y in terms of x, right? Not u in terms of y. So let's see how do we do that. So for that, what I am going to do is I am going to, um, let me make a border here. Now what I am going to do is, uh, we are going to use this information that u is equal to dy over uh, dx, right? We're going to use the information. So if I do that, now what do I have? So I have a dy over dx, which is the u, u, which is equal to c1 times y. Again, here also I can further use the uh, uh, um, variable separable method. If I do that, then this is going to be 1 over y dy equals a constant 1 times the dx. If I integrate this any further, I am going to have ln of y is equal to c1x plus you know c2 and so therefore here we can say my y would be if we take the exponential functions if we're taking the exponential on both sides this is going to give me y is equal to uh, e to the c1x plus c2 if we rewrite it this is going to be you can say this is e to the uh, c1x times uh, e to the c2 if you want to call this is the C, then you can rewrite this whole thing as y is equal to a constant times e to the another constant times x, where C and C2, C1 are, or C1, C2, C, C1, C2 are arbitrary constants. So here, uh, C, C1 are arbitrary constants. So that's how we would, uh, we can solve uh, this problem. And again, these are two nice, uh, very simple substitution method that works very well. Um, but these are not the only methods. The other way to solve this nonlinear equation, uh, if you recollect, you know, the using um, face plane, using geometry, using, you know, geometric method is one way to do. So basically just graphing, how does the solution behave is the one way to solving them. There is another method that is called um, series solutions. There is another method that is called uh, series solutions and we will talk about that series solutions in the next video so this is called the series solution the idea of this series solution is that uh, uh, very similar to your calculus too you're going to set uh, the solution y of x as a series right something like you know a n x to the n n going from 0 to infinity using taylor series or mclaren series if you remember using taylor series or mclaren series you can represent the cosine sine and e to the x and many other functions so the idea is that what if a solution happens to be something like this in infinite series, then how can you figure out these, you know, a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on using that is what we call the series solutions. I will give, do another example in the, of, the, of solving the differential, uh, differential equation using series solutions in, in a, another video. I will stop it right here. And so basically if you summarize what we have here is uh, number one, nonlinear differential equations are uh, relatively uh, challenging. So there are one of the ways, the two ways that we looked at in solving them is using reduction of order. And the uh, basically here we assume that u is a function of y prime as a function of x and then solving it. And the other one is that treating u is a function of y where setting u is equal to y prime. In other words, u is equal to dy over dx. But treating here u as a function of y, not as a function of x. And then uh, repeating the process. So these are the two methods we learned. There are other methods as well. We'll take a look later. That's all I have for now and see you in the next video.